I've got some time. Oh, I'm an actuary. That means I keep tabs on a worker's living expenses. How much it costs to feed, clothe, shelter, bury, and replace your average human worker. Technically, I'm employed by the Spacer's Choice Department of Human Resources. Thanks. I'll see to it that this medicine gets to the people who need it. Here. Something for your trouble. Nothing personal, but I hope we never do business together again. Don't want to make a habit of consorting with smuggler types. You do have some cheek on you. Lucky for you, I kept a little contingency fee in case you tried to negotiate with me. Somebody deserving. Silas on account of him being out in the cold. Amelia seeing how she's around people all the time. Anybody in the sick room? It's a fine new day in Edgewater. The cannery hums, streetlights and faces glow. I suppose this means the two of you were able to sort out the matter? The greater good can be difficult to determine. None of us can know the effects of our decision in a year, or ten, or a hundred. Take comfort in the fact that your choices are always, ultimately, in line with the grand plan. from our own graveyard, just outside the gates. And Silas had not even an inkling. What do they pay the man for? He spends all day digging graves, Vicar. Sir, sometimes he's got to sleep. Yes, of course. Uh, my reaction was unreasonable. I'd need to give it careful consideration before answering. If it does improve the soil, it would seem to be a benefit overall. Once the spark of life is fled, the mortal form is but unanimated matter, comprised of the same elements as the rest of the universe. We inter for the comfort of the living, not the benefit of the dead. While distasteful, I would judge Ms. McDevitt's actions beneficial to the greater good. Only to the feelings of the living. The dead are no more concerned with their corpses than a snake is with the skin it shed. The greater good is to tend to the needs of the living, not the dead. Wonderful! This is fantastic! Well worth all the sacrifices I... Wait. What the fuck is this? Is this... French? I can't fucking read French! It's a law-forsaken joke is what it is! French! Ha! I was so high and mighty, preaching to the yokels about following the plan, while fighting it at every turn. Over... Overreacting? Do you have any idea how many years I spent in... <sighs> no. You couldn't possibly know, could you? I've spent my life searching for the keys to unlocking the secrets of the universal equation that underlies the plan. I had hoped this book held some of those answers. I became so desperate, I even got myself assigned to this plague-ridden backwater to find the damn thing. All the time and suffering I've spent. Wasted. Bokonu, the author, had some interesting theories about man's perception of reality that I thought could be applied to our attempts to decipher the plan. Unfortunately, he was also one of the founders of the Philosophist School of Thought, so the book is banned in this colony.
Philosophism's a false religion that stands in contradiction to almost everything we know to be true. They believe all is chaos, in stark contrast to OSI's belief in the plan. But most of the philosophist perversion of Bakonu's thoughts came more than a century after his death. The story of my life. Most lay people are not aware of this, but we've not discovered any new insights into the plan for a long, long time. I had an idea that we should welcome the truth, no matter where we found it. I had the worst idea to share my thoughts with a superior. And that's how I ended up assigned prison duty, where I was fool enough to let an inmate bend my ear with stories of an original Bokonu journal. But that's neither here nor there. What I need to do now is to find a translator, obviously. But to do that, I'll first need to secure transport. You have a ship. Perhaps I could make myself of use to your crew. Certainly. I already gave you most of my money, but I can offer you free spiritual counseling, and I'd be happy to watch your back. I'm pretty handy with a tossball stick, or any blunt instrument, really. I'm also a passable gun hand, if it comes to that. I can usually talk my way out of conflict, though. Oh, I'm fairly competent at hacking computers as well. Well, understanding computers is, though I admit I took it further than most. And I was quite the 32nd back during my penitentiary term. <laughs> Left many an opponent bleeding in the prison yard. Of course, I'm a vicar who is dedicated to his calling. More dedicated than any other you'll find in this colony. I joined the OSI to help decipher the Grand Plan. But instead, I ended up the vicar in a prison due to ignorance and politics. Then I came here. Satisfied? Fantastic. I promise you won't regret this. Edgewater's gonna miss you. Folk here always had good things to say about their vicar. Thank you, Ms. Holcomb. I'll be glad for the change of scenery and to leave this place behind. It is my esteemed pleasure to serve as your crew vicar, Captain. This is the simple truth. We are all molecular machines. The body is a collection of atoms. The mind is a consequence of chemical reactions. Therefore, our lives are predestined along a path that is only visible in retrospect. Life is fated and unstoppable. I don't know, Mr. Vicar, that seems like quite a leap. You the new worker? Whatever. Make it quick, Tenderfoot. I'm busy. Foreman Granger, mind those words don't come out of your mouth unless preceded by yes or right away or thank you. Shit. Silas still on about that? Here, take the fees. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Reed I was late on my payment. Because they're not my fees and not my gravesite. Guy I worked with shot himself. I paid the bill. I could do without the sarcasm. Wasn't acting out of the goodness of my heart. Law requires delinquent gravesite fees to be paid by the deceased party's closest living relative, which meant me. Shame, though. Eugene was a good worker. Woke up one morning and put a round through his upper story. Can't imagine why. The kid was doing all right at his desk. We all thought he was an upstanding receptionist. Just between the two of us, I'm pretty shocked his weapon didn't misfire. 
Spacer's choice handguns aren't the most reliable. Eugene wasn't family. Yeah, I was the closest living person relative to his body at time of death. I'm the one who found him, you see, so I pay the fines. Suicide's a crime. The legal term is irreparable damage to company property. What Eugene did to himself was vandalism. I'm plenty serious. In fact, I'm a little upset Eugene didn't think things through. In other words, Edgewater would have been penalized pretty hard. Whatever Eugene was worth as an asset, we would have had to pay out of pocket to Spacer's choice. Well, excuse you. I'll have you know Eugene was an asset to us all. May his atoms be commended to the law. All I know is Silas asked me for Eugene's gravesite fees, which means he was approved for burial, which means his papers went through, which means the town's in the clear. I'm just glad to put this whole ugly affair behind me. Eugene can rest his bones in peace, and the rest of us can get on with our own lives. I had a question about your plan, Mr. Vicar. Of course. The cosmos is generated and directed by the universal equation, also known as the grand plan. By contemplating the teleological order of things, one can achieve verity. Oh, um, right. You had a question? Never mind. That about answers it. What can I do for you? Go ahead. What can I do for you? You know about Eugene? How? Then, you know Phyllis suggested selling off Eugene's gold teeth. I didn't approve of the idea then, and I don't approve of it now. Eugene's golden teeth were a family heirloom, representing three generations of poor dental hygiene. He took them to his grave. That's unthinkable. Eugene's body, and all rare earth minerals contained therein, are solely the property of Spacer's choice. I can't ask Silas to dig up a man's body and pry a few teeth loose from his jaw just to pay my bills. Can I? Uh, are you asking rhetorically? Because if you're being serious... Ugh, gross. Desperate measures, Miss Holcomb. Desperate measures. I'm going to have to ask Silas to dig up those teeth. It's the only way I'm paying my gravesite fees. I'm sure that I have no other choice. Here you are. Gravesite papers affixed with my signature and an IOU. Eugene was not a suicide. He put a bullet in his brain, yes, but that's largely a technicality. I was the one who prepared Eugene's body for interment. I discovered symptoms of the plague on his corpse. And I discovered medicine in his pocket. Lots of medicine. Eugene overdosed on Adrena time, which is known to cause psychosis and paranoia as possible side effects. The paranoia drove him to take his own life. We can all thank our lucky stars that young Eugene was hopped up on medication and suffered its predictable side effect. I included it all in my official report. I'd like to think I saved Edgewater a great deal of money. We never could have paid the fines associated with a suicide.
Who wants to play an impromptu tossball match? No one? Really? A friend of mine died a couple weeks. Hey, you hear about Wilson? What's on your mind? I paid his burial fees, didn't I? Let the dead sleep. I don't understand. I found Eugene's body. I know the guy shot himself. Wait, are you telling me he was murdered? He was plagued? Oh, law, that's awful. I helped carry his body out. I could have been infected. This is all a little too much for me to take in. But I guess if Eugene wasn't a suicide, our town won't have to pay a penalty. Something got you down? When I was little, we'd get freighters in every Sunday noon. Now they only come but once a month. I love the wind here. Thank the law. I've been requisitioning backup for months. Guess the boss finally came to his senses. You ever swung a truncheon? Let me see your rifling stance. I want to make sure you're up to snuff. I told Silas I'd pay my dues if he agreed to join the resistance. Guess this means he's finally heard the calling. The war. The coming apocalypse. Man versus machine. I'm talking about mechanical soldier. Cold, heartless automatons made of iron and lies. Just my luck. I ask for backup, and the boss sends me one of them simple folk. All right. Listen real close. Auto-mechanicals. Creatures forged in the fires of malevolence. I seen them over by the old power plant. Clattering about. Firing at the birds. Orchestrating their uprising. When the swarms of mechanicals come clanging on over that hill, where will you be? Cowering beneath your cot? Or standing shoulder to shoulder with the resistance? Go on. You ever seen the way a mechanical just stands there? Just looking at you? Scanning you with its murderous oculars. Mechanicals have been programmed to eliminate the human race. They've been programmed to replace us. First, they will rob us of our jobs. And once they have taken away our livelihoods, they will take away our very lives. I've been gathering up a war chest over the years. Saw tuna cans, mostly, some spaces chaw, few bit carts. I'll reward you for your aid. They have sent a scout, prowling around the junkyard just behind our beloved town. This scout must not be permitted to return to its base of operations. Cross it off, then report back.
Mechanical's got a weak spot in their midsections. I think the technical term is, um, the blue glowy square thing. Fancy threads. That some kind of hibernation suit? Yeah? What about him? Yeah. Funny thing, Eugene's body ain't where it's supposed to be. The night we were supposed to commend his body to the earth, I had his grave all dug up and ready, right? And so I thought, I'll just rest my eyes a bit. When I woke up, his body was gone, spirited away, vanished. The footprints nearby suggested that Eugene was stolen by marauders. Or he rose from the dead. Let me know if you find anything. I need some time to gather my personals. I need some time to gather my personals. What can I do for you? You found Eugene's teeth? What? Where? How? McDevitt? The old flavor specialist? That is just grotesque. I suppose I should be grateful. You've saved me some trouble and no small amount of embarrassment. Things are changing around the Vale. Don't matter much to me, though. Graves still need filling. You run into any trouble? Reliable work from a freelancer. That's gonna take some getting used to. Abernathy was sick? With the plague? That's disgusting. I shook hands with the guy. What? No. If I knew he was sick, I would have had him reported. I needed his fees because of his name. A for Abernathy. He was at the top of my list, you see? Yeah?
Ah, oh, he ain't no threat. Bet I could fix him up smart. Searching for repair bay. Error. Navigation systems failed. Unable to comply. I could probably fix that. I mean, if you wanted me to. Yep, I see the problem. His nav mod got dislodged. Must have taken a tumble. Just gotta give it a good push and wait for the click. There we go. Jeremy's good as new. Well, new by Spacer's Choice standards, anyhow. His name's Jeremy, by the by. Navigation systems operational. Optimal path toward repair bay detected. Initiating self-diagnostics. On account of I fixed him. And he's Jeremy on account of his helmet. It's like Jeremy, the officer in True Romantic Tales of the Space Guard. Hebs to Shirley. I make a point to watch every Tuesday night. Be more careful out there, Jeremy. Self-diagnostics initiated. Please do not disturb. Never seen the veil lit up like this before. You beat that scout to scrap with its own legs? Pulled its optic cables out its headcase? Actually, don't tell me. Rather use my imagination. You're a passing fair soldier, I will confess. But you are one. And the enemy is legion. What you need is an equalizer. A weapon to strike fear in their cold, mechanical hearts. Cantina, lavatory, behind one of the toilets. That's where I've kept it hidden all these years. Sharp, ain't it? The lavatory is the very last place a mechanical has need to enter. On the double, soldier! Don't want the bartender poking around in there with a mop. Yeah, huh?
Never seen the veil lit up like this before. Feast your eyes, soldier. This here is a genuine Spacer's Choice injury customizing unit. Designed to deliver a lethal blast of electrical discharge. I call it the Hand of the Law. You ever want to see a mechanical flailing around like a grounded fish? You stick a couple thousand volts in its guts. With compliments from old Ludwig. Time's come for you to journey down into the black heart of the enemy's camp. I'm talking about the old geothermal plant. Unfortunately, the old plant lies outside my board-given jurisdiction. You'll need to get a passcode from the boss, Reed Thompson. I've been after a passcode for years. Boss said no on account of my gross incompetence with all matters related to security. I need you to get us the brain of a mechanical. Well, not exactly a brain. Anatomically speaking, what we're looking for is a logic module. Don't tell anyone, all right? I've got a contact. A real expert in the inner workings of the automaton. We are gonna rip those mechanical secrets right out of their circuits. Well, excuse me. What I meant was I'm going to get a contact. I didn't know I had to be all prissy about my grammar around you. There's the rub. If a mechanical breaks down, the logic module fries. So you can't rip one out of its corpse. You're gonna have to find an intact model somehow. I don't reckon so. I work with gears and pistons and such. Stuff you can put hands to. Computers and mechanical brains are outside my ken. You know, she names the mechanical she fixes. Calls them Bess and Clancy and so on. Keep a careful eye on her. Could be a sympathizer. If you die horribly, I will pour out a can of Zero G to your memory. Never seen the veil lit up like this before. Bang up work, soldier. You're a credit to your uniform. Oh, that reminds me. Gotta look into getting us a uniform. So this is it then. The key to humanity's victory over the mechanical hordes. I would reward you with the gratitude of the resistance, but I'm guessing you want something tactile. So here's a couple of bits for your trouble. And a little something to remember me by.
On your right, Captain! are victorious. Don't mess with us! You took one down!
Well done. We're still alive. Nicely done. Wish we had some better rations. Do 
Just the way it goes, hey, I suppose. thanks for helping me back in that cave. You got a real knack for curative work. Interesting jumpsuit you've got. And by interesting, I mean suspiciously reminiscent of contraband. We pay by the finger. What do you have for me? Gil Antrim. Real name, Guillaume. Duly processed by a freelancer on behalf of Spacer's Choice. I remember him. I was just a kid last I saw him. Shame. I'll just need your signature here, 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 and here. Got any more fingers for me? Mabel Burgess. Age 37. Right or left-handed? Let's just say no longer applicable. I remember Doc Burgess. Conducted my physical every fiscal quarter. Guess she couldn't keep her hands off her patient's medicine. Still one outstanding bounty. If you've got a finger, I've got the paperwork. Here we are. Birdie Cotton. Cause of death. Let's just say overwhelming physical trauma. Bert was the local preacher before Max took over. Always was quick to remind us that we all get what we deserve in the end. Well, that's all three. I must remember to requisition some more fingerprint to ink. Here's all the compensation you've earned, plus a bonus. You've done such a bang-up job hunting down our former workers that I thought it only proper to deputize you. Congratulations. Let me stop you there. It is official Spacer's Choice policy that all Marauders, regardless of prior affiliation to the Spacer's Choice brand, no longer qualify as our people. Marauders are folk who lost the will to keep working, wandered out into the wilds and gave into their baser instincts. Not everyone's cut out to work in Edgewater. Some turned deserter, some turned Marauder. None of them get my sympathy. Uh-huh. I recall young Eugene. Good kid. Nice smile. Fussy about his health, though. Took a little too much Adrena time. That'll do a number on your brain matter. Says so right on the warning label. Violent psychosis is a well-documented and legally accounted for side effect of Adrena time. What's on your mind? Hey, thanks for helping me back in that cave. You got a real knack for curative work. Been eating nothing but salt tuna for a year. At least you got your health. Wonderful. This is fantastic. Well worth all the sacrifices I... Wait. What the fuck is this? Is this... French? I can't fucking read French. It's a law-forsaken joke is what it is. French!